Hi there, Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. We are dental practice brokers. Today's topic is sellers beware when selling a piece of real estate and dental practice simultaneously. What you must be cautious of. We're gonna get into that in a minute. As you know, we're now in uh, 20, over 20 states across the country. We have talented employees, including two CPA accounts, marketing director, uh, operations director, and uh, multiple act development acquisition team members. So we got a great crowd for you now. We're now open for you. Uh, 363 days a year. We take our Christmas and Easter. We're available from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. every single day. So call us, even if you just want to call to chat, we'll be more than happy to help you. Excuse me, I'm putting my glasses on. This is, whoa, this is bright here in New Jersey. All right, it's a little better now. So uh, just give us a call. We'll be more than happy to take care of things for you, even if you just want to chat about what the future looks like, uh, give us a ring on that. Uh, our phone number is 201-663-0935. Our uh, website is dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebrokers.com. Look it up. We have a lot of information on there. Website we have loaded. And then you'll also get connected. We now have 400, I think, 9 or 10 YouTube videos. We try to give you current breaking information as it's happening from the street, from the road. We feel like we're a cop on the beat or a news reporter at the front lines. We try to give you breaking information. So get, you know, listen to those things. Now, um, obviously everything you're about to hear is, is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. If you're thinking about selling to a DSO, please call us first. We know who they are, how to deal with them. Vast majority of them pay our commission, so there's no commission to you. And when you work with us, we'll get your legal fees returned to you, refunded to you upon successful closing, so you won't have a lot of fees. You may have out-of-pocket initial fees, but we'll reimburse those based on certain criteria, um, and we'll, we'll help you with those legal fees. Now. Um, you've got to understand in a situation, every, you know, every deal is different. Okay. Uh, but when you're dealing with real estate in a dental office, one of the key things you've got to check, does the real estate have an oil tank? This is critically important. Just like a, you're a homeowner, you're checking now, but in dental, it's even more important because you're going to put a deal together. You don't want to discover these things halfway through. You've made an offer has been made, and now he's the he or she buyer is proceeding forward with oil tank uh, scanning, see if there's an oil tank. You may say, "Well, there's no oil tank. Don't worry about it. It was above ground, taking it away." They're still going to do a scan. Now you've already made a deal. They're now scanning for oil tank. Here's the problem: they find an oil tank, or they test the soil, which they normally do. They find something. It delays the entire process. Now the buyer, who's not super sophisticated, this is the first you know, big item they've ever purchased, begins to lose their edge or they'll look somewhere else. You want to do your oil tank inspection well ahead of time and find out. Of course, you'll check this with your attorney, your environmental attorney, but you want to get all the problems taken care of. Now we have a doctor that wants to list his practice now. He believes there's an oil tank. We're telling him, get the oil tank observed, get the soil. Um, and this is based on, I work with some mortgage brokers, get the soil tested. Because you don't want to be in a situation where you find out about the oil tank later, and then suddenly you have to do something for uh, removal, slows up the process. Essentially, you got an oil tank, get it out of there. Because eventually the ultimately the attorney for the buyer is going to say we want the oil tank out or the you know the attorney is going to want that so when you have situations like that get your oil tank out of there or at least test the oil does the uh, 
what do you call it, the soil around the oil tank, make sure it's not leaking. But everybody's gonna be checking, and it may be easier to get proactively if you have the financials. But even if you don't have the financials, what are you gonna do? If a buyer discovers it and says, well, take it out, and then you're behind a couple, several weeks. At least you can control the situation if you own the, you still own everything. So just get that oil tank out of there is the opinion of myself and a few attorneys and my uh, mortgage banker friend. You don't have to, but at least you ask your attorney, what does he think I should do? That's just a point of suggestion, all right? It's not too expensive, you just get it out of there. That's the key thing. Get it removed, get on top of it, speak to your attorney with their advice, but just don't wing it, all right? Oh, listen, we have a lot of new, I think we're up to 100, and I don't know what it is, 410, 11 YouTube videos more than anybody. So please check it out. And uh, we have everything you need on those YouTube videos. And uh, we hope you can learn something from it and save you a lot of money or if you have a problem. A little ounce of precaution is just nothing like it. All right, thank you for listening. We will talk to you soon. We're knocking it out this weekend. We are working every day. All right, team, thank you.